Okay, let's go ahead and talk about percent. Now, when it comes to practical mathematics, there's probably nothing more important than your ability to solve a wide range of percent problems. Because percent problems come in different varieties and flavors. It's just not one type of percent problems. So anyways, you want to have a real command over percent because just think about how much during the day you see this symbol. If you go to the store, you'll see this symbol. Things are on sale. If you watch TV, there's all sorts of financial uh, commercials out there. Hey, credit cards, this particular you know, uh, interest rate, et cetera, et cetera. If you are at your job, if you happen to be working, you're, you might very well be uh, working with spreadsheets and you have to figure out percentages. I'm just telling you right now, you really want to have a full command of percent. And a lot of you probably are pretty good at percent right now, but I'm going to challenge you to do this problem and put your answer into the comment section and please feel free to use a calculator. Remember, a calculator is nothing but a tool. Okay, so you have to know what you're doing with the calculator in order to get the right answer. If you happen to get the correct answer, that's perfectly fine as long as you're not guessing. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to solve this problem. But uh, percent is one of these things that uh, people have been taught percent different ways. Some of you have learned percent 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, or maybe you learned it last week. It doesn't make a difference as long as you know what you're doing and it's correct mathematically. That's what counts. But I'm going to show you the solution to this problem here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, but what you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need assistance in your current math course, or maybe uh, you're studying for some sort of uh, special test, uh, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe the ASVAB, a teacher certification exam, anything with a math section on it. Or if you homeschool, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different uh, math courses that cover all these categories. It will really help you out big time. Also, if you need a pair of math notes, okay, one, you should have your own notes. But if you don't have any notes right now, you need to start taking notes. But in the meantime, you can use my notes. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. 501% of 100 is equal to what? Well, let's go ahead and look at the answer. It's equal to 501. All right, so that is the answer. And if you got that right, that's fantastic. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a nice little happy face in A+. Plus a 100% and a few stars uh, so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Now, if you got this answer correct, but you were like, eh, I wasn't quite sure what I was doing, just happened to get, get the uh, right answer, well, that's good as well, but you know, that's not a way to confidently uh, solve percent problems or any math problem or anything, you know, you want to be, uh, you know, um, you know, confident in your ability to know what you're doing. That's the true uh, level of math you want to obtain, right? So you don't want to learn math just like, oh, I, I think I'm getting these problems right because that's not any good. You want to be confident in what you're doing. And uh, certainly when it comes to percent, you really want to understand what's going on. But let's go ahead and get into the specifics of how to solve this problem. All right, so what we need to do is we need to figure out how to find the percent of a number. So 501% of 100, okay, we're finding the percent of a number. So this would be very much similar to a problem like this. What's 6% of, uh, let's see here, 57, for example, okay? So here is a uh, problem that, you know, I think this is probably the most basic type of percent problem, 6% of 57. Oh, I'm trying to find a percent of a number. How do we do that? Well, most of you who um, have a pretty, you know, basic understanding of percent would say, don't we have to change the percent to a decimal and multiply by the number? Well, that is absolutely correct. That's what we need to do. But some of you might have been thrown off at this particular problem because we're dealing with a percentage that's bigger than 100. So it's like 501%. So automatically you might be thinking to yourself, what do I do? You know, I'm not used to, you know, working with percents bigger than 100. Well, you do the exact same thing that you would do in this problem, right? 6% of 57. And of course, you can see I have all, you know, the kind of formula of what we need to follow here in a second. But I just want you to kind of 
you know, look at the prompt for what it is, right? If you can say, oh, I know how to change this number to a decimal, and then I want to multiply by this. Well, it's no different in this particular prompt. So that's what we're going to focus in on, how to find the percent of a number. So how do we do that? Well, you can see here, uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to change the percent. We need to change it to a decimal, okay? So you can write a percent as a decimal, and you can write a decimal as a percent. So that's really the first thing that we need to do. Now, once we uh, uh, rewrite our percent or change it to a decimal, all we're going to do is multiply by the value that we're trying to um, find a percent of, right? So 501% of 100, well, if we multiply that by uh, this 100 by the decimal equivalent of 501%, we're going to get the answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how to change a uh, percent to a decimal. Okay, this is very, very easy, and here is how you do it, okay? So when you want to change a percent to a decimal, okay, or convert a percent to a decimal, all you have to do is take that percent and divide by 100. It's as simple as that. And any time in mathematics you divide any number by 100, what that effectively does um, is move the decimal uh, point two places to the left. Okay, so to go from a percent to a decimal, simply divide by 100. And again, that's effectively um, moving the decimal point two places to the left. So let's go ahead and do that now and change this 501% to a decimal. So I'll take that 501 divided by 100. You can use your calculator if you're not comfortable doing this math. If you take that 501 divide by 100, you're going to get 5.01. Okay, so that is the correct answer. But let's go ahead and do this. So we basically did, um, we uh, wrote the percent to a decimal by divided by 100. But let's go ahead and do the same thing by just moving the decimal point over two places to the left. So a lot of you are saying, okay, well, where is the decimal point? I see 501%, but where's the decimal, decimal point? Well, the decimal point is after the one. We don't write that, but you can think of that as 501.0%. So here's where the uh, decimal point's at. So if I move it two places to the left, here's one and here's two, you can see it's gonna land right there and we're gonna end up with that 5.01, right? Uh, that decimal right there, which of course is the same as if we took that 501 and divided, divided it by 100. Okay, so that's what we have to do first. We change our uh, per, uh, percent to a decimal, which of course is 5.01, and then we're just simply gonna multiply that by 100. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So 501% uh, percent, uh, changed into a decimal, or uh, that percent converted to a decimal. There's a number of different ways you can state that, but we're, we're going from a percent to a decimal, 501, and we're gonna multiply by 100. We're gonna actually just undo what we just did, right? We divided by 100, now we're multiplied by, by 100. We're gonna end back up with 501. So some of you might be like, you know, kind of confused with your results. You might be kind of, well, let me see, let me kind of make a better expression than that. You might be like, uh, 501, I'm confused. That's just the number I just did. Here's the thing, right? If you got 501, but you were kind of like looking for another number, and you're like, well, maybe I did something wrong. Uh, well, no, you did everything right, okay? So don't be confused with your results. The only way you can have confidence in your results is just to be like, you know what? I know what I'm doing. This is I'm finding the percent of a number. I changed this correctly into a decimal and multiplied by that number. So this is the correct answer. So yes, indeed, you are right. And you want to be like, you know what? I know what I'm doing. 501 is, in fact, the correct answer. But let's go ahead and um, kind of see this in a different way. We're taking 501% of 100. Now, notice this is 501. Let's say I was taking 500% of 100. Let's kind of uh, visualize what's going on here, okay, so we can have confidence that 501 is, in fact, uh, the right answer. So let's say I have this little bar here. And uh, you can see it's broken up into five sections, one, two, three, four, five. So let's suppose this right here, this bar is 100 units uh, tall or it's equal to 100 units. So what's 100% 100 of 100? Okay, if this is equal to 100, 100% 100 of 100 is going to be this whole value, right? It's, it's, all, it's everything of this value right here. Now, just to kind of put this in contrast, if I said, what's 50% of 100? 
50 percent of 100 well it would be halfway there right this would be 50 percent of 100 okay hopefully that makes sense but 100 percent of 100 is the whole thing okay but what does 200 percent of 100 mean well if this is 100 percent one full bar shaded 200 percent of 100 right 100 percent of 100 is one of these full bars shaded 200% of 100 is going to give us two bars, right? Which would be what on our little scale here? It would be 200. So you can see, we could just kind of continue to play this game. 300% of 100 would be three 100 bars stacked on one another. And we could keep doing this all the way up to 500% of 100. So here's 100, 500% is uh, this is the two, this is 200, 300, 400. This is 500, right? So this is what that is equal to 500, 500% of 100 is 500. And of course, 501% would be this right here, that 501. So it's important that not only you know how to, uh, that not only, you know, the mechanics, uh, and the procedures to solve percent problems, but you have a strong conceptual understanding of percent okay and i'm telling you right now this particular problem is i would say like you know kind of a basic level medium level percent problems there's uh, many more interesting type of percent problems that you want to challenge yourself with so i think sometimes people say oh i know how to do percent problems because they have all they've done is basically um you know do real simple type of percent problems but the better you're uh, better off you are with percent the better off you're going to be just, you know, not only your math uh, classes, you know, maybe at your, your work, your job, and just in everyday life. So if you need additional help with percent, let me give you a couple of suggestions. One, I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel that cover uh, uh, percent. So that's a good start right there. But if you want to know, if you want to learn like in a more formal way from me about percent, I would check out two of my courses. One, my math foundations course, which is a nice little mini course that covers basic mathematics. It's three chapters. Um, uh, so that's if some of you out there kind of coming back to math, relearning math, you want to start with the basics, I would recommend that course or my pre-algebra course or algebra one course as well. I do cover percent. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.